Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I am Ratha Krishnan. Though it is a little late in the day, I think it is very important that we talk about this camera. I am holding the Fujifilm X-S10. Now this camera was launched during the last quarter of 2020 but uh, this launch got really buried deep under by some real mega launches by all camera brands including Fuji themselves. The X-T4 and the GFX 100S well really I think has affected uh, the visibility of this camera. This is just a pure personal observation. Along with the Canons and the Nikons and the Sonys of course added to that effect. Now there are two cameras from the Fuji's uh, lineup. The X-T30 and the X-H1 has been growing a little long in the tooth uh, for some time and uh, we were in fact uh, in Japan uh, during the launch of X-T30 we reviewed it extensively and we really really loved that camera and that camera was really ready for an upgrade it wasn't coming uh, but eventually I think this XS10 is upgrade to the X-T30 I'm sure a lot of people in the YouTube world also will agree to that. According to us, the XS10 is very important because these days any photographer when he goes out to buy a new camera, he definitely has a wish list in his mind. And I think this camera fills all that, ticks all those boxes. Let's look at what they are. The first one, of course, is the fact that this is a mirrorless camera. Of course, Fuji produces most of their cameras are um, mirrorless cameras. Second one, the most important one, is the introduction of IBIS in this range of cameras. This has a five axis in-body image stabilization, which will give you a five stop advantage. The third important one is that it is a 26 megapixel sensor, which is of course the in the X-T4. The processor is the same and it gives you eight frames per second when you are shooting uncompressed RAW. Remember, this shoots 14-bit uncompressed RAW. That's amazing. And the moment you switch to electronic shutter, well, this can shoot up to 20 frames and up to 30 frames per second with a 1.2 crop. Well, um, there are times when you will need that kind of speed. Well, of course, then you have uh, that available in the camera to take. The other one, of course, is the fully articulating screen. This is a feature which now almost all cameras even the real high-end cameras are offering now because people have started expecting this as a default feature now since uh, this camera is aimed at a prosumer well they have also included uh, a flash okay let me switch on it's got a pop-up flash it can be pretty handy in certain situations the limitation is that it can shoot only up to 30p when it comes to 4K but in Full HD it shoots up to 240 FPS including the standard 24 and 25 and 30 and 60 and 120. Well our experience is that at 240 the image becomes a little soft but yes of course it is there in case if you want to take it. Built wise, of course, this has got a very solid feel with an amazing grip. Uh, probably one of the best grips uh, among the entire range of uh, Fuji mirrorless cameras. They have gone a little minimalistic on the appearance. In fact, this camera is a little unlike Fuji design. 
gone are those uh, very traditional conventional you know analogy looking uh, features it is now started to look like a digital mirrorless camera the uh, circular toggle switches and the menu buttons are gone from the rear it's minimal now you got a toggle button and mirror and display switches of course the rest is taken away by this reasonably good sized uh, LCD monitor you have to depend upon the Q button the quick menu button to set most of it and of course on the left side you have a programmable rotary switch available of course this camera uses the X mount which means that the entire range of uh, Fuji X series uh, lenses are available for you to use. Our favorite uh, is the 1680 which we are using along with the XS10 for this demonstration. This has optical image stabilization too and this combination is amazingly well priced too at 125,000 Indian rupees including all taxes which is like a amazing price it's very well built it's metal and autofocus very silent it's from the XF series well you pick this up and you can go straight to a shoot with a couple of batteries and a couple of uh, uh, SD cards in your hand this is ready to take on the world street photography wedding photography any kind of other event photography just pure fun travel photography this is all you require to create amazing images of real professional quality because the sensor that this guy is using is exactly the same sensor uh, which is there in xt4 also is the processor menu is exactly the same to top it it also has all those uh, film simulations available in this of course if you are someone who is really crazy about uh, posts and insta you also have a series of filters you know those crazy filters available in this with all those fantastic features uh, built into one small compact camera with that amazing price point i think this camera has a scope to become one of the largest selling cameras let's actually go out and take some images look at those images and as we usually do we conclude the video
I think it was a very nice shoot. What do you think about the XS10 from Fujifilm? Well, I think it's a highly capable camera that, like I was telling you in the introduction section, we shot some 4K videos, we shot some uh, very straightforward, uh, uh, you know, still images and also some very high contrast and uh, a little tricky kind of a lighting situations was used in some of the still shots also. But in all the situations, I think this camera came out uh, pretty well, I must say. Of course, I couldn't resist asking for the 56 1.2 to get that, you know, that milky bokeh. I mean, I was missing it in some place, so I got it. The F4 was fine, but since I have used the 1.2, well, I used it. Of course, you can see the difference uh, for yourself. We talked about a lot of strong points like uh, built very well, priced very well, lots of features uh, which can be compared to uh, the X-T3 and the X-T4, but this definitely is not a replacement for the X-T3 and the X-T4 for sure. This can play a second fiddle to the X-T3 and the X-T4. But yeah, that's what many photographers will be looking for. This is perfect for uh, vloggers. It's perfect for uh, a beginner who's seriously getting into photography. Uh, this is one camera for many, many, uh, you know, kind of usages. I also have a couple of things which I wanted to kind of caution you about. The EVF. Um, I think uh, needs improvement. If you are comparing it with other cameras that you have used, yes, EVF, there is a little bit of a compromise there, especially in low light. It was not probably up to the mark. Well, because I have used many other, you know, uh, Fuji cameras, uh, but maybe this is made to a price one. Second, the face detection. I wish it was a little better than actually it is. It kept on, you know, targeting wrong places, especially when our model was wearing the specs. Of course, it couldn't identify the eye. Uh, so it was kind of going a little crazy. Um, so during such situations, I would recommend that uh, you shoot in the, you know, you need to kind of manually select your focus. I think these are the two places and of course, battery. Um, well, we kept on looking at the uh, LCD and, you know, just to make sure that we got everything right. Maybe because of that, the battery ran out a little earlier than I thought. Other than that, I have uh, no complaints about this uh, camera. It's a highly desirable, highly effective camera, especially at that price. And of course, if you are interested in getting regular tutorials from us, of course, become a Pixel Village YouTube member. Click the join button and join today. And if you are someone who's interested in learning photography, of course, Pixel Village has a website where we have some of the finest photography mentors teaching photography online for you. Well, log on to www.pixelvillage.com to know more. Bye for now.